What's up, Ocean? You got Matt here, coach of your Montreal Mylotic, bringing you our week two battle for the IBL. And if something looks a little bit different, oh my god, we have some brand new graphics. I am so excited because these graphics, honestly, it's been a long time coming. The graphics I've been using for the past, I don't know, five, six, seven months, I made those on my own. And they're cool. Don't get me wrong, I was really happy with how I did them, but this is something a lot more professional for you guys. I got High Velocity Boy Grant to take care of this graphics package for us. I'm so excited. We have some more stuff in the pipeline coming down a bit later, but uh, that's not going to be for this week. It's going to be maybe next week or the week after, but at the end of the day, I'm really, really excited because these graphics are absolutely sick. The top, I can change to match whatever logo I use. The bottom, same deal for my opponent. So we have the yellow to match the Columbus Swoo, who is our week two opponent. But we did, unfortunately, pick up a loss last week. And I'm really disappointed because I did not play well. I really, I, like looking back at it, I had three or four potential spots where I could win the game, even after I misplayed heavily. It just happens. Like, yes, I could have banked on the paralysis, didn't end up getting it, but at the end of the day, I still misplayed. And I could have done better, I should have done better. And going forward, I will do better. Because again, we're continuing on. This is our revenge season. I'm not going down 0-2, I'm not letting it happen. So if you guys are excited, make sure to hit the like button, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. We are already closing in on close to like 830 subscribers, which is insane because we just passed 800 like a week ago. We just passed 750 a month ago. You guys are absolutely crushing it. I really appreciate it if you guys will subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Now let's go ahead and get started. You can see my opponent's team on the bottom, my team there at the top. He's got a very scary roster. Um, GMAX Hatterene, big threat. He had it last season, and he actually, I believe, went... Maybe I think he had two losses all season long, and then he lost in the semifinals to the eventual champion, just like I did. But his team is very threatening. He uses G-Max Hatterene very well. Hydrating is very scary. Ferrothorn is actually a really big problem because it does a decent job at walling G-Max and Teleon, which normally would just pick his team to shreds and just demolish it. But Ferrothorn is there. Darmantan, very, very scary because look at my water type. I have a Basculin and I have an Inteleon. Both of them don't really want to take fire hits that much. Uh, my ice type, or my dragon type, excuse me, is an ice type as well. Kind of not the best fire checks I have on this team, and Darmantan's pretty fast, pretty hard hitting. He can run Life Orb and just wreck my whole team, so we gotta be very, very careful about that. Looking at the rest of it, um, Hydreigon with Nasty Plot or with a Scarf is spooky. Honestly, if Scarf and um, Hydreigon or Scarf Darmantan have to come, I would say it would be Scarf Hydreigon. What else is there? X Cloud, it's very hard with Scrappy, Specs, Boom Burst. Passimian with the Scarf. Scyther with 105 base speed, dual wing beat. Technician is a huge threat to deal with, so we gotta make sure we play around that thing very well. But I definitely believe we have an amazing shot at winning the week this time around. Starting off with our G-Max Inteleon. This thing is coming every single week, guys. It, it just is. We are not running the crit set with the focus energy. Instead, I opted to go for U-turn instead of that. We still are running scope lens, and that's because with snipe shot, we should, I'm pretty sure about this, I think it's a 100% chance to crit my opponent. So that helps us a lot in case of a potential Calm Minding Hatterene. In case of a, I don't know, does anything get special boosting moves? Calm Mind Raichu? It does a bit better. With Sniper, we obviously do a lot more damage to a lot of different things. Air Slash in Max gets us our speed boost, and Max Darkness will lower my opponent's special defense, meaning that Snipe Shot and Air Slash will hit things a lot harder. And then U-Turn is there for momentum. Our speed is there for the Raichu, just to be safe, because that thing is the fastest member on my opponent's team. Um, and the big thing as well, once we actually get the plus one boost and the Ferrothorn is gone, we could pretty much just win the game, especially if the Ferrothorn and the Tentacruel are weakened down. So that is my plan with this set. Moving on though to our next mod, that is going to be our Aegislash here. Aegislash is a fantastic matchup this week, just offensively. Iron Head, Shadow Claw, Close Combat, and King Shield. The only thing that really hurts this thing is its chance to get burned. I would have loved to run mixed with Shadow Ball and with Flash Cannon over Iron Head but the Tentacruel is pretty bulky, and if I want to fire off a Shadow Ball, it's going to be doing a lot less damage to it than if I was running a physical set with Shadow Claw. Close Combat is there for the Hydreigon and for the Ferrothorn, and the rest of the team gets nuked by my dual stabs. And the good thing is, with our Akaberry and with the King Shield, we can pretty much handle anything Darmantan wants to do, unless it's running like a subset, which at the end of the day, if it's running a subset, that's better for me. I don't think it will. It's just not a good set at all. So we have this set here, which should be doing very, very good for us. The big thing, again, I mentioned the Aquabarian and Darmantan. Whenever Darmantan comes in, I go for King Shield. I scout. I make sure I know what it is going for. If he goes for Earthquake, cool, we take that hit no problem. I think even if he's banned, we take that hit, which is insane. If he goes for Flare Blitz, okay, you're now minus one, and you're going to have to deal with an Aquabarian. So you're going to do nothing to us with 
a minus one flare blitz in our shield mode with an aqua berry and we go up and fire back a shadow claw and get the ko and if we don't we just go for a free king shield again we're back in shield mode you're at minus two now we're not dying we're taking hits easily this set is very important for us i'm hoping that we can do the work because it easily revenges a hatterene that is no longer maxed our next mon is going to be our machamp making its season debut and honestly machamp is not it's Machamp. What do you like somebody to say? It's, it's a Machamp, okay? But this thing is really good this match. We're running No Guard with the Dynamic Punch, with Poison Jab, Earthquake, and Knock Off, and Adamant Nature as well. And with this spread, with the Assault Vest, it's very important to note because we take two Timid Life Orb Draco Meteors from Hydreigon after Rocks. Very important to note because we want to make sure that we take hits from that thing. We don't really have the best switch-ins on our roster because, honestly, Dragon and Dark Coverage destroys me outside of Clefairy, and Clefairy doesn't have a great matchup this week. It's kind of setup fodder for the Scyther, setup fodder for the Hatterene, setup fodder for, I guess, Ferrothorn with Curse? I don't know. But at the end of the day, it is a very, very scary matchup for Clefairy, so I decided to go against running that this week. But we also are able to take a non-modest max special attack, max Dazzling Gleam, or Mindstorm from the Hatterene. Very important. And with our speed, uh, we just have four left over, so we went with that. And we also take a couple more things. I just got to find the right calc for it. Um, actually, no, we don't. That's that's it for the calc. So that's it for my champ. It's a couple other things. I have a few more calcs that are not in the notes. But moving on, we have our Curum here with one of the weirdest EV spreads I've ever run. If you guys remember back in the day when we had BBL, I think it was season three, when we had Primal Groudon, this thing has some of those EVs, the funky EV spreads that I had with that thing. We got 68 in HP, 84 in attack, 148 in defense with a negative nature in defense, 132 special attack with a boosting nature, and 76 in speed. It's a really weird EV spread with freeze dry, iron head, roost, and substitute. With the mild nature, we actually are able to maximize all of our EVs the best because 90 is the defense stat for Curum, and if we reduce that, if we just take the negative by 10%, it takes a lot less EVs to get back up to normal than it would for something like reducing our speed or our attack. With our spread, our substitute is not broken by a Scarf Darmantan's U-turn. We have attack to always 3 kill a max defense, max HP Hatterene with leftovers with Iron Head. We have speed for Advanced Anaconda and 28 speed Tentacruel. And we also take a Timid Focus Blast from a Specs x -Loud. That's a very, very important thing to note. We also take a Modest Boom Burst, no problem at all. Yes, it goes through Sub. We have Freeze Dry, we have Iron Head. We're pretty fast, decently fast, I'd say. But yeah, we we'll have to be the we'll have to be the the, the X Cloud. No problem at all. I'm not too worried about that thing. This thing is really really good against the against Ruppy in the matchup. I'm hoping that we can put in a lot of work with it because it's a cool set. I want to make sure that this this crazy thing actually works for us. Moving on, our next mod is going to be our Crocodile with the Assault Vest as well. We need to have checks to the Hydreigon. That thing is very very scary. And at the same time, this can take I think a hit from a Hatterene if it's not maxed and if it is not super super offensive. But with our spread, we take two Timid Life Orb Draco Meteors from Hydreigon after Rock, so same deal as the Machamp. We have speed for 28 speed Tentacruel and add in Sandaconda, same deal as Kyurem. And we also take a Jolly Scarf Dramantan's Flare Blitz without using our Intimidate, which is very nice to have just in case if he ends up running Bandit or Life Orb, we can still take that hit easily, fire off an Earthquake, and get the KO. With Scale Shot, we lower our defense by one stage, but we boost our speed by one stage, and we also hit two to five times. That is our main way of hitting the Hydreigon. The reason I'm running that over something like Close Combat, which hits both the Hydreigon and the Ferrothorn, is because late in the game, Scale Shot, game over. We hit my opponent's team for incredible damage. If it's just Darmanitan, if it's just Tentacruel, if it's a weakened, a weakened Sanaconda, a weakened x whatever the case may be, we can just go for it and win the game outright. Again, really funky EV spread here. Uh, it's in our best interest to run 12 attack EVs with a positive nature than to, I guess, Put the evs into our speed because we have a lot higher of an attack set than we do a speed stat our next mon is going to actually be our final one and that is our rotom heat making its second appearance it's not getting crit this time that is not happening this time around with the bold nature and our investment we can take hits from the darmantan pretty well we take a jolly life orb rock slide from the darmantan from full with the boots obviously we are not taking any damage from hazards very important so we don't get our uh, rotom heat weakened on one of our pivots with bolt switch overheat paint slit for recovery and thunder wave we're able to decently check a lot of different things. One of the big things I expect is that Hydreigon is going to be one of the switches to this thing because what are we going to do to hit it? It resists electric and it resists fire moves. Also, we're not going to run Disarming Voice on our Rotom. It's just not going to happen this week. So I go for Thunder Wave as he turns out with all of his speedy, speedy Pokemon and then I paralyze the big, big threat and I can just Volt Switch out, go into my check and go from there. So I'm very excited to use this set. It also has the exact same speed as the Crocodile, as the Kyurem, which is speed for 28 speed Tentacruel and a adamant sandaconda we also take a 
timid life orb draco meteor from hydreigon just to be safe and we take two modest max special attack side shocks from the hatterene that is obviously in base by the way so make sure we gotta make sure that we actually have the chance to take that hit and we can always fire off and full switch and then or overheat to do tons of damage as it maybe goes for calm mind we both switch out of there against something else basically we have options we do resist the fairy stab so we and the mystical fire obviously which are two pretty big coverage options for my team so i'm hoping that ruppy has to run i guess mystical fire dazzling gleam and shadow ball i think are gonna be his three options maybe not dazzling probably draining kiss and maybe calm mind as well those are what that's what i'm expecting honestly and we definitely have a team to counter a lot of his threats i'm really excited for it i'm hoping that we can get the win we def we desperately need it honestly i'm not falling down 2-0 i do not want to go down 0-2 so that is our team, guys. Let me go ahead and get started with the battle. All right, everyone, we are back. Um, missing a Passimian sprite here. Oops. Um, but looking at this, I'm definitely leading off with my Rotom. That is my absolute best play as I finally get the sprites. I can move it down over here. And the reason I'm going to lead off with Rotom, and again, I am surprised because he did not bring the Hydreigon, but it may be a chance to uh, kind of see what we're going to be doing because this may be a potential playoff matchup. We're going to press done, leading off with Rotom. And uh, yeah, so Passimian could be a definite lead for him. I do feel I have a very free Thunder Wave, though. Uh, paralyzing everything would just be fantastic because I make the X-Cloud just a bit bigger. X-Cloud is a very spooky, spooky mon, though. <laughs> that thing is terrifying. But have fun to Ruppy, and we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. So let's go to my damage count. We have Rotom over here. Darmanitan leads. This is going for a U-turn here. If it's not, we get a free Thunder Wave on it, which neutralizes probably the biggest threat to our team. So I'm going to Thunder Wave here. As I'm expecting him to maybe go into the x -Cloud, maybe the Passimian. We'll see. We'll see. Because um, I'm assuming he thinks a Volswitch is coming out. We'll see. What does he want to do? Is he going to go for a Substitute? Because that's the only thing that could really hurt us here. We're also going to find out, I guess, if it's Scarf. It d depends. But Darmanitan, if it is Scarf, Rock Slide. Okay. That is Scarf damage. And we managed to paralyze it. That's dope. That's fantastic. I will take it. And we know for a fact that it's, it's locked into the rock slide there. I can go hard into my Crocodile here. Um, it did 100 points of health to me. Darmanton's got a ton of HP. It's got 105 HP. If he's got no bulk, let's get a calculator out. It's out, if he's got no bulk at all, let's say this, guy, this guy's got 4, so it's got 181 plus my 57 divided by 2. We're going to be at 119, which means we'll take the next hit, so I'll go for a paint split here. Paint split comes out, uh, as we expected, and we should be at 119 here. 118, so he's got no investment at all, and he's fully paralyzed, so I'm taking that for sure. So I can go freely. The question is, do I go for a Volt Switch or an Overheat? They both, well, Volt Switch is a little bit more. I'll just go for the Volt Switch. Got no reason not to. And because he did not bring the Crocodile, not the Crocodile, the Hydreigon, Crocodile is kind of expendable, but do I want to go into Machamp? I don't think we're going to outspeed it if we go into Machamp. Do I need the bulk on Machamp for anything specific? I don't think so, so I think it's going to be better off me going to Machamp here. So we're going to do that. As if he goes for a Rock Slide, he goes for a Rock Slide, so be it. And he does, and it should not do too much damage. 169 down to 133. Did a bit more than I expected. 25 points of health. Percent, rather. 25%. And I got a free knockoff here. Got a very free knockoff. What are you going for? What are you switching into? Hatterene? You're not going to appreciate this knockoff. You're going to have to max after that to take the poison job coming out your way next. It's going to be rough. It's going to be rough. We'll be able to find out a lot about the Hatterene here. We're in a really good spot starting off. This is fantastic. The full paralysis on the Darmanitan, I swear, that's not what I was intending to do. Um, I didn't really need the full para. I just need to make sure I weakened it a little bit. The Ruin, that is the Tentacruel. This is not going to appreciate the knockoff at all. As we do a huge amount of damage with Black Sludge. Amazing. And let me think. Does he just have Toxic Spikes here? Is that a thing? Um, I think that's our Toxic Spikes. Do I get screwed over here? It hurts, for sure. But it's not the end of the world. I'll Earthquake. 
sludge bombs. I'm definitely cool with that. Nothing. Zero damage. And goodbye, Tentacruel. That is one of his two checks to the Inteleon that are gone. That is amazing. Fantastic. You know, last time I played Ruppy, he had a Tentacruel as well. And the first, I guess, couple turns of the game, I killed it with a Mamoswine on a prediction. So, <laughs> hopefully, oh my god, hopefully it doesn't end up the same way the last game ended up, which we lost. Oh my god. While I have this time, of course, I am going to say thank you again to Grant for supplying us with the amazing team builder graphics. If you guys missed the team builder, you guys skipped ahead to the battle, cool, no problem, but go back and check out the team builder slides. They're absolutely beautiful. We're going to have brand new team builder slides every single week with the colors that match the opponent's logo and our logo, of course, so it's going to be really, really cool. We got another game coming out tomorrow, and uh, we had a game yesterday. Uh, I actually did a game before the team builder slides were released to me, but if I did my job properly, I went back and I edited that video to make it look like the Team Builder slides were brand new, that first battle. His Psyche, yeah, that is the Hatterene. Um, question, question of the day. Well, I'm fine, no matter what happens, um, if I Poison Jack here or not. If he goes for Trick Room, he goes for Trick Room. Let's take a look, Hatterene, G-Max, level 50. Uh, poison Jab, if it's max HP, max defense, is a roll to 2 a KO. Not even, I don't even think it actually has a chance to. 40. If he's leftovers, it's a 9.8% chance. But I think that is my best bet here. I will Poison Jab for damage. And we shall see what he wants to do. He is not Kebby Berry. And we do over half to it. That's amazing. As he Psychics me. Do we live this? We don't know. We do! Oh, that's huge. That's so dope. Uh, he's got a G-Max here. He's got a G-Max here. And I think I knock off. I don't think there's any reason for me not to knock off here. Like, I'm not going to kill it anyways. It'll be in range of an Iron Head, and this way I get rid of a potential Iron Head, or the Beery Berry, but in comes Gage, that is Darmanitan. Bye-bye, Darmanitan. That is the second kill from a champ. Oh my god, this Pokemon is so good for me right now. This Pokemon's just being fantastic. Two kills from a champ already. Amazing. And we get rid of Choice Scarf like we had expected. Um, all right. Looking at this, hmm. If this comes in on what? the Ferrothorn or the Exploud, I get huge damage off on something, so I will definitely take that. I can just go for Dynamic Punch pretty freely as well. What do I sack? This is the Exploud? No, it's the Basinian. Do I sack off anything here? Do I feel like I... Is it vital for me to have this thing around? Hmm. Hmm. I can't go into Crocodile because it has Defiant. I completely forgot about that in prep. I'm trying to think, what do I go into here? I can't have a gang to plus one. I just can't. Well, like, if it goes for a rock move, I'm covered. If it's Scarf, at least, it goes for a rock move, I'm covered. Let's see. Um, do I sack this thing off? Mm, I really don't know. Let's go into Rotom here. I don't think Rotom is that important. It's not going to take a hit from the X-Cloud. It's not going to do too much damage to the... What is that thing called? Tatarine. Um, it deals with the the Ferrothorn, but so does my... What is that thing called? I'm trying to think of the name. The Champ. That's it. Uh, but I can really go for a Thunder Wave here as well. Because we'll take the next one. So I'll Thunder Wave. We now find out if he's Scarf. We shall see. And we'll see if he goes for into the Hatterene. Now the reason why I was able to run... He switches out. The reason I was able to run Thunder Wave is because we're not affected. Yeah, so he does. He goes into Hatterene. I'm fine with that. Magic Bounce will activate. We aren't affected. Poor. This is exactly why I decided to run Thunder Wave specifically. Um, trying to think. How do I want to play this? Hmm. I think I'll go for the... Do I go for Overheat or Volt Switch? I'll go for the Overheat. I don't really need the Rotom around too much. It's nice, again, it's nice to have, but not super necessary. I'm going to get a big hit off on this thing. If Hatterene is just max HP, which is definitely a possibility with the damage that we had done, Overheat does 46 to 54, and him Gigantamaxing is a good sign for me. We're going to do about half to it. 
And he's gonna have to go for a max psychic, I believe, to kill us. I don't think Max Knight will get it done. So let's see, what is he gonna do? I could have gone for a pain split there. I'm not I really don't like the pain split mechanic and how it works with Gigantamax, Max, but it is what it is. We do about half here with overheat. Yeah, basically what I expected. That's nice. As he goes for a Phantasm. Okay, so that's gonna get the job done for him. As it does, indeed. So Rotom goes goodbye. But even though Rotom did not get a kill this game, it was still extremely important for us. So shout out to Rotom here. Now, do I go Aegislash? Do I go Machamp? Machamp gets a kill. Kyurem also gets a kill. Hmm. Crocodile without speed probably will get a kill. Teleon definitely gets a kill. <laughs> um, I'm going to go into Aegislash here. It has the best chance of taking the next hit, so I'm going to do that. Again, what I'm doing is trying to open up the door a lot more for Inteleon here and for Curum. So, let's see. What does more Shadow Claw or... Okay, so Aegislash, Blade. If it's Kasibberry. So let's keep doing it again to Max. Wow. Uh, we know it's not Max Defense. We know that for sure. I'm assuming it's Modest. It literally depends on which berry he is. Actually, Iron Head is more damage, so I'm going to go for the Iron Head here. We still have a high chance to KO. So let's go for the Iron Head. See what he's got. Stance change activates. You know, I think we drop to a Max Flare here. He's definitely, he's not Max Phantasm, so he's going to go for that. But Iron Head comes out. It is not Berry Berry, and we get the KO. Beautiful. Okay. That's, that's cool. I'm happy about that. I was really uh, thinking that we may not be able to get the KO here, which would absolutely suck. Whoops, I changed the layout there. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. So. Question is. He's got Defiance on the Pissimian. If he goes into that, which I think is the right play, he's going to be going for a knockoff, most likely. Maybe an Earthquake. If he goes for Earthquake, fine, whatever. I, I got in my shield mode, no problem. But if he goes for knockoff, it activates his defiance. So we have to plus one. The question is, do we somehow, do we drop to knockoff at neutral? Passimian, if it's Choice Scarf, level 50. Uh, knockoff will... Has a chance to Okomi. Okay, but he goes into x Bot instead. Um, okay, this thing gets scrappy. But it is resisted. Let's go x Bloud. Level 50. Modest choice specs against Aegislash. It goes for Focus Blast and knocks me out. Boom Burst will not knock me out. Fire Blast will not knock me out because of my Aqua Berry. I think if I go to Shield Mode, let's see, how much does Shield Mode take from Focus Blast to go to 140? We actually live that hit. So the only thing that hurts me here is if he's like sub. So I'm going to go for a King's Shield. We'll see what he is. We will see what he is. As he goes for. What do you go for? What do you go for? Boom burst, nice. So we take that hit easily. Oh, Julius just hand me a neutral game bar. Thank you, babe. Off-brand? Did you not like it? <laughs> it was an off-brand neutral game bar I got, so. Um, okay, close combat knocks it out of its max HP. So I don't see any reason for me not to go for it. Let's fire off the close combat. Again, if it's modest specs, at this point it does 40% maximum. He switches out. What, choose your sack, baby. Choose your sack. Baker, okay, it's not a sack, but it's... You're not appreciating this hit. Stand change. All right. And let's close combat it up. Oh, we do just under half. Does... What is more damage to a Pisinian? Close combat or Iron Head? I think Iron Head would do more. Actually, I think they do the same. Iron Head does a touch more. 56.5 is the max roll for no bulk. Okay. So Knockoff definitely gets the job done now. Um, I don't need Machamp anymore. I don't need it. We're in a really good spot as is. I do not need it anymore. So as good as Machamp was for us early game, I don't think it's necessary right now. So let's see what we go for. Knockoff, Earthquake, Knockoff. All right. And say goodbye to Machamp. All right. Question is, do I go Inteleon here? Because if I go for Inteleon, I go in U-turn. I can go Kyurem actually pretty freely here. 
Because I think it's Scarf, this thing. So let's go Kyurem. Freeze Dry will do enough to KO it, unless it's like a Salt Fest or something. If it's a Salt Fest, it's a Salt Fest. Let's go for that Freeze Dry. I'm trying to cover my bases here, just in case. Yeah, I'm not going for a sub here. I know he could switch out. I know it's definitely a possibility, but I'm not risking it. He does switch out. And he goes into Morningstar. That is the... Yeah, that's this thing. Big damage. Oh, look at that damage. And it's leftovers. So I'm playing risky here. Um, I want to go for a sub. In case he goes for a Leech Seed. Uh, he go for a knockoff. I'll sub. I'll sub. And we'll see. We'll see what happens. As I sub up, what do you go for? Knockoff, leap seed, toxic, knockoff. Hey, we live that hit. Our, our sub takes that hit. We're a bulky, bulky, bulky Kirim. And we can fire off a second freeze dry now against this thing. That's amazing. And we got our roost as well. If that's the only way of attacking this thing, we're in a great spot. So let's go for a freeze dry again. This game is looking good for us. It's looking really good. It's looking like Intellion's gonna come in and just click buttons. Ooh. Like, I love that damage against Ferrothorn. I love that damage against Ferrothorn. Body press. Okay. That's fine. We should take that hit pretty freely, which is nice. How much PP does body press even have? I wonder. Uh, let's take a look. Ferrothorn. Oops, that's Ferris Seed, but I can check body press anyways. It does not. Fun fact Ferris Seed does not get body press. <laughs> Uh, body press has 16, so we didn't have to go for 8 of them. How much is body press doing to me anyways? Let's see, Kyurem against Ferrothorn. If it's max defense, max HP. Body press does just about half to me. Um, I think my best interest is just keep attacking, honestly. Just keep on attacking. As long as I make sure that it's in range of Inteleon, I can win the game. Like that. It's in range of Inteleon. We're, we're in a great spot here. We're fantastic. We're in a fantastic spot. Because Exploud is going gonna, is gonna to be in range. It's going to be easily dropping for sure. Um, do I freeze dry again here? Sack this off? How do I play this? I think I do. I freeze dry here because I can't risk the Inteleon not getting the KO. So we freeze dry again. We're going to pick up our KO on the Ferrothorn. We do. Fantastic. So down goes the Ferrothorn. It is unfortunate because that Scarf Passimian can come on in and click buttons against me. The good news is we have a max HP Aegislash, Inteleon, and Crocodile on the back. Caleb Hayes, that is the Exploud. Okay, um, again, we should outspeed this thing. Let's go to Exploud. Level 50. Sometimes I forget my own, like I swear to God, I forget my own calcs that I've done. My own notes. Oh my god. 50. If it's modest... It gets to 120. It's got to be timid to outspeed us. So, I almost clicked Dynamax there. That would have been really bad. You know, Modest Specs Boom Burst won't kill me from full, which is nuts. But uh, Freeze Dry will do 36% to this thing, which is no damage at all. But let's go for it. Let's go for the Freeze Dry. That's fine. And let's see. Is this thing a Salt Fest, maybe? It is a speedier boy. Boom Burst comes out. That should get the job done against us. As it does. That's fine. Uh, because this means Inteleon comes in and Inteleon wins the game for me. So where is... Nope, that's the wrong Pokemon. That is Kyurem. Okay. Exploud. We did a good chunk to it. So if I go to Inteleon, Gigantamax, Airstream, does not do as much as I wanted to. And wow, Boom Burst. No, if he's modest, he doesn't. He can't ever Oko me. So I'm going to go into Inteleon here. Let's do that. Do I need the... Do I need the speed, though? Because Passimian's gonna... Like, not... It's not gonna kill me. The close combat is 52% Gigantamax. So, I'm gonna max here. And I'll go for Hydro Snipe. That is... I think that's my best bet here. I don't need the speed here. It'd be nice, of course. But I don't need it. At this point, everything is gone. Everything speedy is gone that I would need to take a hit from. Like, like an Okomi or something. So, I'm fine with that. As long as we get the KO on this... 
I'm in a fantastic spot. I'm in a fantastic position. And looking at the calc, if he is no, that's if he's Pissimian. No, it's not Pissimian. It's Xcloud. Xcloud, a max special, max HP Xcloud takes 80 to 95. So Hydra Snipe comes out, chance for a crit. Yeah. Goodbye. All right, down goes the X-Cloud. This is looking fantastic for us, guys. Our, I'm, I'm just gonna say, our team is nutty. Our team is so, so good. We just gotta make sure we play it right. In comes Baker. Um, again, Hydro Snipe is my play here. So let's fire off the Hydro Snipe. And we should take any hit. Is it Scarf? Let's see. It is Scarf. Ooh, eat it. And that is a GG. We pick up a 3-0 win against Ruppy and his Columbus Swoo. This is amazing. So we got our revenge for the last time we had played, which he allowed him to get his revenge for the previous time we played before that. But we got the win, nonetheless. I am super, super happy with how this game went. The plan worked out really well. The team was perfect. Obviously, the Passimian kind of came in and was a bit of a problem because it was the double Scarfer and it had Defiant, of course. Um, without Defiant, definitely changes a lot of the game because I didn't need my Aka Berry this time around for the Darmantan because we managed to get the Paralysis off on it. But everything that I brought, everything that, the, that came this game was an absolute success. I do want to give a huge, huge thank you to Liv and to Robert Panda, now Almighty, all, wow, now Almighty Panda, uh, because they are absolutely incredible. Uh, and to Granky as well for helping me with the mock. Those guys were really able to, to come through with the discussions. Josh as well, but uh, Liv and, and Panda were able to give me a hand like today when I really needed it. Uh, they actually helped me out a lot with the Curum set that was really, really ridiculous. That was such a cool set to run, uh, really interesting. And honestly, everything put in work. Everything that hit the field put in work. You look at our team, like what, what did, what, okay, first of all, the only thing that didn't come in was the Crocodile. So Crook did fine. Machamp, two KOs. Curum, get rid of the Ferrothorn, weaken the, what is that thing called? x make sure it's not a Salt Vest as well for Inteleon. Aegislash, what did Aegislash do? It killed something, I know that. <laughs> Aegislash killed the... Killed the, uh, the Hatterene, that's it. Yeah, got rid of the Hatterene. It forced out the, the x allowing me to get damage off on the Passimian, which is nice as well, in case, again, that thing was Assault Vest or something. Uh, and then we had the Rodent Heat. Rodent Heat, just the paralysis on the the Darmantan was, was huge. That was a huge, huge deal. The only problem is I played a really good hand here. My team was really solid against Thruppies, and if we do play in the playoffs, it may mean I have to either make some significant changes or, or, hear me out, I bring the exact same team. I don't lose. That is the plan. Or hopefully we don't play Ruppy because I think we're in opposite divisions, which means he actually has to play me in the finals, which hopefully that does not happen because I don't want to play Ruppy again. It's very scary. But yeah, that is the battle this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you have a like on the video. Of course, subscribe. Wow, wow, I cannot speak. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. I'm here to bring you guys the most fun, entertaining, informative, and educational content I possibly can do with a bit of increase in professionalism with the new Team Builder slides. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you all next time.